so <clears throat> let's uh, move on to the next lecture in which up to now or let us try to sum up up to now we have seen uh, ac circuits uh, and how to represent in phasor domain and how the uh, impedance in ac circuits come out to be they become complex similarly uh, voltages and current become complex but overall if you see the uh, ac circuits can be uh, basically written in same form or made in same form or look appear to be same form as a dc circuit of course the quantities now become all complex otherwise it is similar to a ac uh, dc circuit uh, resistive circuit except for the fact that all the resistances becomes impedances which are complex whereas resistances are real in dc circuit all the voltages and current becomes complex sources become complex whereas they are real in case of a dc circuit that is the only difference the rest everything is same as far as ac circuits are concerned for the sake of uh, completing the analysis we will see the take the steps and see how how this uh, DC, AC circuits are analyzed. Okay, we'll try to analyze and try to show they are exactly same as in case of uh, DC circuits. So the, these are the basic steps which I have just told you. First, we have to transform the time domain circuit that is all sinusoidal quantities into a phasor domain circuit. So circuit is transformed from time domain to phasor domain. Uh, that means all the sinusoidal quantities sources etc are changed to phasors and all the impedances uh, inductances capacitors and resistances are put into uh, complex form so that is basically the transformation that is a circuit gets transformed we'll see an example then you solve that problem using circuit techniques like nodal analysis and mesh analysis and superposition theorem everything is applicable as it is applicable in a DC circuit and once uh, you find the applying these techniques you can find the current voltages whatever analysis you want to make then you transform that resulting phasors back to time domain so once uh, the resulting values are there in phasor domain you can uh, put it back into uh, time domain so what we are doing here is we are having a time domain circuit transforming them to in a frequency domain all these phasors etc are basically called frequency domain variables okay omega is there and once you have analyzed solved then again the resulting things you can put into frequency domain so let us uh, see how nodal analysis is done okay we'll see exactly it, uh, it has one to one analogy as for a case of a dc circuit <coughs> So KGZL is valid for phasors also, only the thing is they are now complex values, so uh, they are having the same characteristics. We can apply Kirchhoff's current law uh, at each node, except for the reference node, and assume that all the unknown current leave the node for each application of Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, you can take otherwise also, there is no restriction on this, this is not restrictive, just for making the thing simple. Uh, so all the currents are leaving or you give any arbitrary direction if you want uh, solve the resulting equations for nodal voltages now if there are dependent current sources then are uh, dependent voltage sources then you treat them as uh, normal current or voltage sources in the circuit and write the equation in the variable form whatever variable is given and later on you substitute that value so it is as easy that, as that you can as you do for a DC circuit. So let us take up example and see how this is done. So let us first see this is a time domain circuit in which you have this source 10 sin 2t. 2 is the uh, radian frequency omega t and these are the values 2 ohms 0 0.2 farad 4 ohms and 2 henry and so on and this is 3 times vx so this is all we have in a time domain circuit and this is taken as a reference now what we have to do is we have to first transform into a uh, into a uh, frequency domain circuit okay so what the frequency domain circuit is basically you transform the uh, the sources 
transform the sources into phasor domain so this tan sine 2 t becomes tan angle 0 because uh, the frequency is information is not kept here so tan angle 0 because here phase angle is 0 and this is a current source so this is a current source here it is sinusoidal please remember just showing it like this or uh, sometimes they will show it like this also so both are valid uh, so this is what you have then this is 2 ohms uh, resistance then this is 0 0.2 farad so uh, it is a capacitor and capacitor becomes 1 upon j omega c so omega is 2 c is known and accordingly we'll calculate you'll get this j 2.5 ohms similarly here you multiply l omega j omega l so that is what you get j 4 ohms and this is 4 ohm this is the resistance no only change is needed here so all these are frequency for a particular frequency they act like this and this is the uh, dependent source it is kept as it is and it depends on this vx <clears throat> so once we have this circuit transform now you have no nothing to do with sinusoidal things it is all phasor and now you can analyze like any dc circuit so we can write the equations here so what could be the equations let us this is this is please remember this was reference and if you want to write the equation for v1 then for v1 10 is going in 10 angle 0 is going into the circuit equation for v1 node v1 so 10 angle 0 is going into this then uh, here it is going out of it so v1 upon 2 this is the amount of going, current going out of this node then uh, this is again going out of this node so that is minus v1 minus v2 this is the amount of voltage difference upon the the <coughs> impedance minus j 2.5 this should be equal to zero so this is what kcl for node v1 and that is what is written over here then uh, this is basically mathematical manipulation of that you can do it the way you like so this is equation for node 1 similarly what would be the equation for node 2 so for node 2 if you see just remove these things so for node 2 i'll go more basic for node 2 for those who who don't remember exactly so for node 2 I have equation for v2 in this case if i call this i1 i2 i3 then i can call it i1 is going into the node i1 minus i uh, plus i3 minus i2 equal to zero and i1 is basically uh, v1 minus v2 upon j 2.5 okay this is what i1 is plus i3 so i3 is basically 3 times vx i'll write whatever it is minus v2 this is i3 and direct according to direction and this is 4 ohms and then minus uh, v2 upon j4 this is equation for node 3 uh, sorry node 2 and only two nodes are there and if you see this is what equation 2 is i hope we are able to see both together uh, v2 by j4 minus here v1 minus v2 so that is plus and minus so they are different sides of equality minus j.25 and this is same thing so that is how that is uh, equation is written and you can substitute vx equal to v1 as the case is here so uh, same uh, further it is only a kind of uh, mathematical manipulation and as you see you can write the equation in matrix form uh, by taking that one but you can also write it uh, here it has been shown this way because it uh, mathematically the equations are like that but you can also uh, write the equation by inspection also if you want as you did for uh, did for the resistive case the uh, node equation or the node matrices are exactly the same way you can write 
so there is uh, no difference as such so if you want to write node equations for that you can do straight away there is no issue and this is how you further uh, calculations are made so uh, if any problem is there you can just check yourself by writing it by inspection so by inspection means um, uh, you can just uh, write the node equations like this if you want to write y here okay by inspection i'm writing as we have been doing for this ac circuit so this is y and this is v it should be equal to i this is i so let us see y y is this one so total y connected to v1 is uh, basically uh, 2 okay there is a problem here there is a there is a dependent source so that comes in a, in, in our way so we cannot write uh, by inspection but if this was not there we could have written it by inspection so i'll i'll not write by inspection it's not uh, possible it won't be correct to do that way but if this was not there instead it, it had only instead of dependent source it would have been any other kind of source uh, dependent independent source then you could have written the same way as you do for uh, do for a do for any uh, dc circuit just adding all the uh, resistances uh, all the admittances connected to the one that node and so on the way you do it <clears throat> so this is again uh, the calculation part once you write in matrix form then you can calculate it and you calculate v1 and v2 the voltages here and you find that voltages obviously you get them in phasor form because you converted them into phasor form the whole circuit and you got the answers in phasor form and now if you want to know what the uh, time domain solution for v1 is so this exactly is one to one correspondence okay it was a sine omega t angle 60 sine omega t angle 60 this angle is simply put over here this value is simply put over here just transformation of this phasor into time domain circuit and similarly transform motion of this phasor into time domain circuit and this is what you can uh, what advantage you get instead of solving everything in 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 time domain if you do in time domain that i don't know how you will do but if you are successfully doing it then this is the same result you are going to get in time domain circuit also now let us uh, take another example this time we will do it for mesh analysis and uh, here again i have the time domain circuit okay this is the voltage and this uh, this is 30 ohm this is 2 henry 4 henry same kind of circuit which we have seen all the things are given in actual values and now we have to first to solve this we have to uh, solve the first we have to convert into it into a into a uh, phasor circuit and this is what we are doing here i am taking it as angle zero reference here so this is zero so the idea here is see here it is cosine you can also write as 18 sine 10 t plus 90 you know that is that way also or you can take this as a reference itself it is a zero angle reference and while writing back to the going back from phasor to time domain instead of writing a sine function you can write a cosine function so that is how you can do this so here we are taking this as a reference and cosine is my reference so this time whatever result i get i will not write sine instead i will write cosine that's all so 18 angle 0 is the value here and then you can convert this as z1 so angle is this is 10 so i think it will come out to be j20 here and similarly you can actually take the values and put the parallel combination here and that way you will get it z2 and z3 and z4 so these four things you can easily calculate and then you can further so i'm trying to show you how much will be z1 z1 will be basically uh, it is 20 ohm sorry 2 henry plus 30 ohms so this becomes 20 j20 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 
and 30. So Z1 is 30 plus J20. So this whole part is Z1. Okay, and that is this. Similarly, Z2, if you see, 5 millifarad, you can calculate 5 millifarad is 1 upon J into 5 millifarad. So 10 raised to power minus 3 into 10 omega. So that is what it is. And this is basically the Z part. Okay, that this is capacity 1 upon j omega c part and this is 15 and these two are in parallel and you can take parallel combination and take single jet for that jet 2 and that is what is being done over here so this is uh, basically if you see this is the capacitor part okay and this is again capacitor part and this is basically i am taking the uh, parallel combination of capacitor and resistance and taking the equivalent z2 here equivalent z2 here okay this two this is a parallel combination okay and that is what i get as z2 similarly you can calculate z3 okay and z4 and that is all that is the basic thing which you have to do and then you can write the equations node equations so let us see what the node equations would be uh, rather than node equations will see the mesh equation because node equations we have already seen or i'll try to write node equation in this by inspection if you want because here there is no no um, so these are node equations so how many nodes are there so let us say this is v1 and this is v2 and this is reference so if i want to write node equation for this i'll have to convert this into a current source so current comes out to be 18 by z1 okay so this is basically 18 by z1 and z1 comes in parallel anyway so let me write the node equation y first so y means this will be 1 upon z1 plus 1 upon z2 y11 y12 would be between these two okay so 1 and 2 sorry 1 upon z2 and y 1 upon z3 is also there for y11 slightly larger space is required so for node equations by inspection you can write like this z1 z2 z3 for y11 so 1 upon z1 1 upon z2 1 upon z3 is y11 then y12 what is common between these two is minus 1 upon z3 and y121 uh, one is again 1 upon z3 with a negative sign and uh, y22 is basically addition of 1 by z3 plus 1 by z4 this is y matrix and this is i1 sorry this is v1 v2 and equal to i1 so i1 is in loop 1 that is this current has to be equivalent current is 18 angle 0 by z1 and the in current loop 2 it is 0 so this is by inspection if you want you can just see uh, the node equations by inspection and and double check your answer with whatever is given over here so this this is equation written in the same form I don't know they are exactly the same equations or not but uh, when you solve the equation by inspection in this it, it should come out to be same and these are the two node voltages so once I know this angle and the voltage is magnitude I can convert back into time domain and if you see this time I have done cos because cos was my voltage so the once you take cos as a reference you write cos if you take sine as a reference you can write sine and this uh, goes straight there and this 10t is the same uh, uh, is the frequency which we know similarly you can write the mesh equations if you write if you want you can write by the uh, by inspection again and see it 
I don't know this was written by inspection or not, but but I think this appears to be written by inspection. Z1 plus Z2 or I1 minus Z2, I, it appears to be written by inspection. So I1, if you see, what are the total? So Z1 for I1, if written by inspection, loop equations by inspection. I1, if you see, it is Z1 plus Z2. and i1 i2 are in a position so this is minus z2 and again this is minus z2 and this is z1 plus z2 plus z3 and this multiplied by i1 and i2 should be equal to v1 so in loop 1 it is 18 angle 0 same uh, uh, same direction of i1 so 18 minus 0 positive and that is what you get and I think this is the same equation that appears here when you write in uh, when you write in actual if you want to write the actual mesh equation uh, by seeing the circuit by taking the independent meshes so this is z1 plus z2 so this is the matrix you have i1 i2 here exactly the same equation and you can solve it and find for i1 and i2 once you get these values you again use cost function because your reference was cos you made your uh, phasor by cos and that reference you take and by that you can get the currents in time domain so we'll stop here for now thank you